Dr. Hotez, we've been talking about this as a moral trade-off, but it also burdens public health systems. Do we have any sense of what the current outbreak is going to cost? Well, you're absolutely right. Uh, this is not only is measles uh, one of the leading killers of children in the world. Uh, before we started uh, practicing widespread vaccination in the United States, we were looking at 500 deaths annually and 50,000 hospitalizations. You can do the math. That, that's a lot of dollars as well. So measles is going to have not only a significant public health impact, mm -hmm. it's also going to have a significant economic impact. The other uh, economic factor that we have to consider is remember now, if you're a, a young mother or parent living in Marin County, California, or if you're living uh, in Orange County, California, you, you have to be very fearful about bringing your young baby who's not old enough to get immunized against measles outside, out in public. So she's going to remain shuttered. He's going to remain shuttered uh, in the house. This is going to be a big deal. Dr. Hotez, yesterday our Twitter question of the day was we asked whether or not people thought the government should be able to force you to vaccinate your children. It was, we had a stunning response, far more responses than we ever get. And essentially the gist of the critics was that why should you care if I don't get my kid vaccinated, if you get your kid vaccinated? Uh, we're, we're trying to keep our opinions out of this, but how would you respond to that? Uh, I, I'm of the opinion that uh, we should not allow unvaccinated children uh, into our schools. I think that that's it's too much. It's too dangerous to the other uh, children uh, in the school. Uh, you know, people talk about this as a civil liberties issue. Uh, I flipped that around the other way. Well, you know, when Thomas Jefferson wrote, wrote the uh, Declaration of Independence, he talked about right to uh, liberty and happiness. And uh, and the mo mothers and parents of children now uh, in these affected counties uh, can't go outside. They have their rights deprived as well. Dr. Hotez, you are too humble. You have dealt directly with this with your family. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you've provided leadership on autism from your home and from your personal experience. You more than anyone in this nation can discuss this madness linking your medicine to your family's struggle with autism. No one can speak like Peter Hotez. Well, thanks for that. Uh, yeah, it's it's, it's uh, more my more my wife that's uh, borne the brunt of it. Uh, but our uh, youngest daughter uh, is an adult now, who's uh, severe autism and other developmental disabilities. And uh, and I, for for decade for more than a decade now, I've been going out in public and saying uh, autism is very tough on families. It's brutal. But guess what? It's not related to vaccines. This is a genetic or epigenetic uh, disease, a spectrum of disorders, and uh, the idea that a vaccine could cause autism is not even plausible scientifically. Uh, and it's only slowly now that people are coming around to this. Dr. Hotez, one of the things that we're learning about uh, this debate is that it's becoming, it's coming to resemble the debate over global warming in which one side says, well, we have empirics, peer-reviewed science on our side, and the other side says, I don't care. Let me read you something from a Bloomberg News story yesterday. It's a quote uh, from a public health official. If you insult people or you disrespect people, you can harden their perspective. So, Dr. Hotez, you've been talking to the anti-vaccination movement for a very long time. What is the right way to have this debate? Well, that, that's a great question. I think uh, the, the important point to point out, point out is that these are deadly diseases. These are not diseases that we can trifle with, that we can mess with. Uh, having 100 cases now of measles uh, in this outbreak is very scary. Uh, we're going to reach the point soon where we're going to start seeing uh, some deaths from measles uh, of young children. And, uh, and that's a very sobering lesson uh, to have to let it go this far. Uh, so uh, this, is, this is an entirely preventable outbreak. Uh, Dr. Hotez, I I want to draw your attention to an op-ed written by uh, Tom Frieden, the director of the CDC in Time. He writes, quote, measles is so remarkably infectious that you can't protect yourself. You can get it just from being in a space where a person not yet very ill with measles left two hours ago or in an auditorium with just one measles patient many seats away from you. Uh, I believe the official number right now stands uh, just a little over 100 confirmed cases of measles in the U.S. Do you think right now we're sort of at a tipping point where this becomes a broader epidemic? Well, if you remember, you had me on the show a couple of uh, months ago, and I, for, uh, and I explained to you why I do not think Ebola will take off in the United States. Well, for every reason uh, I don't think Ebola would ever take off in the United States, I have every reason to believe measles will. This is uh, more than a dozen times more infectious. It's also a disease where you become infectious before you're symptomatic. So uh, you could have somebody that looks perfectly normal, and they're shedding measles virus into the environment. Uh, and this is one of the most transmissible infectious agents 
pathogens that we know about. And it spreads like wildfire. And, uh, and until we vaccinated the U.S. population, uh, this was one of the great killers of children in the United States. Uh, Dr. Hodes, real quick, because we're running out of time, we have learned that clusters are very dangerous, um, that even a very small cluster of parents that don't vaccinate can, can help the disease incubate. How do you approach that clustering problem as a public health uh, issue? The only way is to get that population vaccinated, to uh, get okay. them into their pediatrician and, and get, them, uh, get okay. them doses of the measles vaccine. Okay, Dr. Hotez, uh, I have a sinking feeling we're going to have to talk to you very often in the future, uh, but it's a pleasure. Thank you.